Hello, my name is Mike Rayner, and this video is about how to install Kali Linux 2 in VirtualBox. The outcomes for this video would be to download Kali Linux, the 64-bit ISO file, verify that the SHA-1 sum for the downloaded ISO file is correct, that the file is not corrupted, create a VirtualBox guest for Kali Linux, then install Kali Linux in the virtual guest, update to Kali Linux, and then finally install VirtualBox guest additions in Kali Linux. Requirements would be an internet connection, VirtualBox installed on the host computer, host computer with enough additional RAM, random access memory to run Kali Linux, 758 megabytes the minimum for the main desktop, one gigabyte recommended, that's my recommendation, and then a host computer with enough additional storage to run Kali Linux. I recommend at least 20 gigabytes so you can get by with less. Additional info at the Kali org page. DistroWatch has a section on Kali. Offensive Security, that's the organization that builds Kali Linux. Then there's a little doc section at the Kali org page. That explains how to install VirtualBox guest editions. While I've researched this material, I can't fully verify that it will work with all combinations of hardware and software out. So I've been asked to include a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop the video and read the disclaimer. Here I am at www.cali.org downloads page, and I'm going to download a 64-bit Kali Linux. I'm going to download the ISO file because that's what I need to use with VirtualBox. Click right here where it says ISO file. And box opens up. You have chosen to open and I'm going to save the file. Click OK. And in my case I'm going to put it in the Kali Linux folder. Click save. You can put it wherever you want. However, you must be able to find it when you create your virtual box. Now, if you'll notice right here, it says 24 minutes on the download. So this is going to be a fairly slow download. And then afterwards, what I'm going to do is verify the download's not corrupt by SHA-1 sum. So I'm going to come back when it's fully downloaded. It's been about 25 minutes and you can see it's downloaded. If I want to verify that it's downloaded, I simply pull the uh, Downloads Kali Links folder, and there it is. And you can see it's about 3.1 gigabytes. In the next section, I'll verify the SHA-1 sum. Now, I've downloaded Kali Linux, and I've downloaded it to the F Downloads Kali Linux directory where you download it. It may be a different place. And because it's been a fairly long download, I want to check the SHA-1 sum. In order to do that, I can use a program from Microsoft called FCIV. You'll have to install it on your Windows computer. The way to use that is just SHA-1 and then put in the file name. If you hit tab, it'll pick the rest of it up. And it's going to take about a minute or two to go ahead and do that. Well, you'll notice that it says File Checksum Integrity Verifier. That's what FCIV stands for. After about a minute or two, you'll notice that I've got the SHA-1 checksum. And you can go ahead and verify this letter by letter. If it's one off, you've got a corrupted download. You need to download Kali Linux again. If all these numbers look kind of confusing, what you can do is put this in a file like this. I'll just call the file SHA-1 sum.txt. You can call it whatever you want. Hit enter. And again, wait a minute or two, and it'll put it into that text file. Once you have that in the text file, I can go ahead and do a DIR, and there it is. And if I put in SHA-1 
dot text and hit enter it will open up a notepad file and I'm just simply going to copy this right here copy and I'm going to go over here back here and then if and I'm going to use ignore the case but in this case the case will be the same and then I'm going to simply set paste here then I'm going to go down here where the SHA-1 text file for the Kali Linux 64-bit ISO whichever one you've downloaded I'm going to copy this now you notice my DOS prompt disappeared but it, I'll bring it back up copy here goes my DOS prompt and then two equal signs equal equal hit a space paste and this is a string comparison what you're going to do is put in an opening parenthesis echo match they match else echo download again or whatever you want to put in here try download again and then hit enter and you'll notice that it says a match and just to show you that this works I'm going to come bring this back up change that B to a D hit enter and you'll notice this time it says try download again and that's how you check and make sure that the downloaded file is not corrupt here I am in uh, Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager and I'm going to create a base machine for my Linux 2.0 64-bit install I'm going to click New and I'm just simply going to give it a name Kali Linux 2 and the type is Linux and I'm going to pick Debian here Debian 64-bit because it's based on Jesse I believe well Wheezy or Jesse I think it's got a little bit of both in there click Next and 768 megabytes is a minimum if you're using the uh, GNOME desktop but I'm going to give it a little bit more who knows somebody will be watching this video next year and they'll want more so I'm going to click next here and I'm going to create a virtual hard disk and it says recommend size is 8 gigabytes but Kali installs to about 10 gigabytes and then you can't really use it because there's no extra hard disk space left. I'm going to change that in a second. Click Create. And I'm going to use VMDK. That's because I can manipulate this a little bit better. But this is probably your best shot if you just have one or two virtual machines. The VDI. I'm going to click Next again. And Dynamically Allocated. Next. And here I'm going to change this to 20 gigabytes. You can change it to whatever you want. You will have to use a command line if you want to go bigger than 20 gigabytes in the future. Click Create. So now I have Virtual Machine. Let, I'm going to make some other settings here. We'll go up here to Storage. And where it says Empty, I'm going to point it to where Control IDE and empty. I'm going to point it to where I downloaded the Kali Linux file. And let me choose virtual optical disk file. You can see right here it is computer wherever you've downloaded it. Right here I've got download Kali Linux. And then this is to click open. That needs to be set so that your virtual machine will be able to install Kali Linux. Click OK. A display if you want you can go up to whatever the maximum of 
video memory is. I'm also going to enable 3D acceleration. That's up to you if you want to do that or not. Uh, because the GNOME desktop is not one of those 2D desktops. I really haven't used it that much. I know Ubuntu is not, and Cinnamon is not. Mate is, though, but I don't believe GNOME is a 2D desktop, the latest version anyway. I'm going to click OK here. System. If you're using a 32-bit, if you can't install a 64-bit and you're using a 32-bit version of Kali Linux, you need to make sure that you've got disenabled. P-A-E-N-X. That's for the 32-bit. And here you can choose if you've got some extra CPUs. Acceleration. This will tell you if you've got virtualization enabled. Both of these will be automatically checked. Click OK. And that's pretty much it for setting up the virtual machine to install Kali Linux. Here in this section I'm going to start Kali Linux. To do that I'm going to start the virtual machine. Do a normal start. Up comes VirtualBox. Now you've got a number of choices here. A regular install and a graphical install. I'm going to pick the regular install. The graphical install might give you some more information on what's happening when something's going on. And it uses a mouse, but I pick normal install. Since it's not operating off the mouse, I better go and use the down arrow key. Now don't worry about this invalid argument. We're ready to go. Now my choice is English and United States. You're going to have to make your own decisions here. And I'm going to pick American English. This is all default for me. But you may have some different choices. Away it goes. Now this install is a fairly long process. It takes me about half an hour to get Kali Linux installed. And there are times when it seems to hang up and nothing seems to be happening, but everything gets finally installed in a number of different installs I've done. So I've got a host name. I'm going to call this Kali Linux 2 and this is all lowercase. Domain name, so I'm going to call it virtual.edu. You can make up your own domain name and hit enter for continue. It asks for a root password. Do not lose this root password. Otherwise, you won't be able to log in. And I've re-entered it. Now one of the uh, requirements was network. And it pulled the time from network server. I'm going to let it go ahead and install and I'm going to basically take the, all the default settings guided, use the entire disk and this is the main partition. I'm going to put all files in one partition and I'm going to finish the partitioning. Just take all the default settings here. You may have different choices and this time I'm going to have to go to the yes where it says write changes to disk so click return for yes it's going to be installing the data to the disk and I'll come back when there's something that needs to be shown or another screen comes up that asks for your input so eventually you get to a menu that asks you if you want to use a network mirror basically using a network mirror from Kali to download some additional software and I'm going to click yes then it asks if you want to use the HTT proxy. In my case, it's no. So I just hit an enter for continue. And right now it's going out to the mirror. Sometimes the mirror may not be working or may be down. And you could have some problems here. But in this case, everything seems to be going fine. When I get to another screen where it asks for more input from the user, I'll come back. Now, here's one thing that I want to point out. You 
get to a certain point in your install where it comes to a blank screen. Just leave it blank. It may go on for well, a couple of minutes. Just let it go. Now, we're not going to I'm not going to have you watch this blank screen for a while, but I will let you know how long it took for the blank screen to go away. Okay. In my case, I looked at this blank screen for about four to five minutes and now it says installing the grub bootloader in a minute there will be a uh, well actually maybe two or three minutes there will actually be another menu item that you're going to have to choose from here it is install the grub bootloader on a hard disk and I'm gonna put yes now you can enter device manually my choice is here, Dev SDA, which is your first, or and you, actually your only hard disk on this machine. But if you put in Enter Device Manually, let's just hit Enter on that, and you've got some choices here. But we only have Dev Device SDA, so I'm going to go back. Uh, you can install it on a floppy, on your third hard drive, and etc. You can read what it says, but I'm going back. And I'm going to click yes again and click choose my SDA or first hard drive or actually only hard drive and hit enter and that's where my grub bootloader is going to be installed. I think that's pretty much it for the install, finishing the installation and I'll come back when we get a new interesting screen. So finally it comes up and says finish the installation, installation complete. It says to remove your installation media, CD-ROM floppies now. I use an ISO file from the host hard drive. So pretty much here, we, I just hit continue. And it's actually going to shut down here and restart. Now, one thing I want to point out, it's going to stay at 61% for a little bit. In my case, stayed at 61% on all my installs for quite a bit of time. Not something to worry about. You're not hung up. It just seems like it is and it's going to take a minute or two to get off that 61%. Okay, it took me about two minutes to get off that 61% and then everything zoomed through on a restart. And that's the choice. And I'm not going to pick advanced options. I'm just going to let it go by itself. And I've got a bigger screen here. Let me go max out the screen. You notice that Kali Linux does not fill the screen. We'll have to add VirtualBox guest editions to have it do that. Here it is on its first start. And I'm going to log in. Username was root. I didn't change that. Click on next. And ask for the password, that password that you created. Put it in. Sign in. Okay. So now Cali Linux has started. And the next section of the video will deal with getting all your updates. Now before you install uh, virtual box guest editions, I recommend you get all your updates. Now you may see a little message here at the bottom of your screen that says updates are available and you can go click on that and follow that through, but that's not here went by and I'm going to go to show applications here on the left and I'm going to just put in update and you'll see it where it says package updater and I'm going to click on package updater I'm going to double click on it and get it started and package updater is running as a privileged user basically it's giving you a warning if you don't want to run a graphical applications for security reason to get your updates, you can go to the terminal and use sudo apt get update and sudo apt get upgrade. But in my case, I'm going to say continue anyway. Now it says there are 74 updates available. And of course, you have to be connected to the internet to get them all. So I'm just going to let it download the packages 
and then install the updates. I'll come back when we've got a different screen. After several minutes, you'll get a committing changes dialog. You may have also had to log back in because the screensaver kicked in. And finally, you get this message, all packages are up to date. And we'll click OK here. So now that I'm all up to date, the next step would be to configure VirtualBox Guest Editions. So here I am after installing the updates, and I'm ready to install VirtualBox Guest Editions. You may have to do a restart after installing the updates. If Kali Linux asks you to do so, please do so. In my case, it didn't require a restart. So to install VirtualBox Guest Editions, go to your Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager, click Devices, and insert the Guest Edition CD image. In a minute or two, you'll see that the VBox Editions image is going to pop up, and you can click Run. It says, oops, there's a problem running the software, unable to locate the program. Basically, you got a permission problem. I'm click OK here, come up here, open up the terminal. And what I'm going to do, change to the directory media. I'm in media, do an ls. So now in media, I'm going to go to change to the directory cd-rom and do an ls. And here I've got all the VirtualBox files. So it won't run here. Well, I could, you know, change permissions, but it's going to be easier if I just copy it over to the root directory, which I'm logged in, and it'll run from there. So I do cp v box linux editions dot run to, and I've got to put the slash on root. And now let's go to root, cd, slash, root, do an ls, and there it is. Now to run this, I'm going to have to do a dot slash, and then the vbox linux edition, run, hit enter, and away we go. So it says, building the main guest editions module fail, but don't worry about it, it's still going to work. So now... I've got it installed, and what I'm going to do is a reboot. And you can also reboot it using the mouse. Reboot, hit enter, and it'll go down and come back up. Now here, I've got the full screen. Ask to log in. VirtualBox Guest Editions is installed. Sign in. And there I have uh, Kali Linux. Well, I can eject this. Right click here and eject. Get rid of it. And so now I have a Kali Linux installed inside of VirtualBox. Thank you.